I am the great Harry Selden, and this is my vault, the place where I occasionally deliver important messages to the future. It's not my way in these talks to give you spoilers, but if you don't want to hear any details about the Foundation TV show on Apple TV, then you should leave the vault right now. As I was saying, I am Harry Selden, the psychohistorian and I have plotted the history of the great empire you call science fiction fantasy literature. That empire has many remarkable novelists and imagineers of the future, but few in the history of science fiction fantasy writing figure as importantly as Isaac Asimov. Asimov wrote more than 500 books in his lifetime and perhaps is best known for the series called the Foundation Trilogy. The first three books won a special one-time Hugo Award for the best all-time science fiction series. That's how big the trilogy is in those circles. It's a series of remarkable scope and dramatic invention that spans a thousand years. Now, you might ask why I have appeared in the vault to communicate with you about all this. And that's because we've reached the first great Selden crisis of science fiction. The Foundation series has finally been made into a live action show. And boy, is it a show. But before we get into the details of the crisis, let me say a few things that are positive. Um, firstly, this realization has some of the best cinematic effects money can buy. And as the John Hammond character in Jurassic Park says, you know, we've spared no expense. <laughs> you know, Apple spared no expense to make this a fantastic visual experience. The cinematography, the lighting, the sets, the way that those have materialized is just visually stunning. And more importantly, as science fiction, many of the ideas and concepts, you know, like the Star Bridge or an empire ruled by a dynasty of clones, you know, those are good science fiction. Those are ideas worthy of a show. Um, regarding the acting, by and large, it's very solid. Um, Lulu Bell as Gal. Um, Lee Pace, who plays Cleon um, in the Empire phase. Um, they're standouts, you know, in their acting ability. Jared Harris is fantastic uh, in everything that it does. Um, those are all positives. But what about the Selden crisis? Well, it's on us. <laughs> what is the nature of the crisis? It comes down to the basic problem of not actually using the material in Asimov's book. Um, you know, throwing away the plan with a capital P. I mean, the Selden plan, that's the plot of the, of the story, really. Um, and they've tossed that out. They've dumped that in the garbage. So, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure if people realize that almost nothing in the seven episodes that we've seen so far uh, is in the book. Starbridge? Not in the book. The Emperor as a clone? All that stuff? Not in the book. The cool water world that the young mathematician gal comes from? Not in the book. Um, how about all the stuff about Terminus? The subplot about the vault as this weird relic that no one can get near? Not in the book. What about the stuff where the girl offers to let the boy feel her up if he reaches the vault? not in the book, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, there is a crisis within a crisis to talk about, which is the gender bending. It seems this is all the rage in the last few years, and shows like Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard have uh, taken this to an extreme, and they've really done poor service to the Star Trek franchise through this, this bizarre idea. Um, Gender and race can be done correctly. I mean, you can have an international cast. You can have equity in film. One of my favorite movies is the film adaptation of the Peter Brook play called The Mahabharata. And I'll put a link to this film in the description because it's a masterpiece of cinema. And in that ad adaptation, Peter Brook uses a cast drawn from all over the world, representing all the races, you know, not just Aryan-looking Indians from a subcontinent. And this has the effect of making that story international and, you know, world historical instead of just parochial to India. It's not about one religion or one people. It's about the world. 
So gender and race can be done in a way that works internationally. It can be done correctly. Unfortunately here, it wasn't done correctly. So there's a believability problem with Lula Bell as gal, and it's, it's not because she's female, but because the environment where she comes from is it's like pre-industrial. You know, how is she supposed to have a mathematical mindset in this sort of indigenous society with these almost tribal beliefs? It doesn't make much sense because where she comes from is supposed to be part of the empire. It's at the time of the, the height of the empire. It hasn't fallen apart yet. So, you know, that's a problem. As far as Gal being played by a black female, that's not an issue at all. Uh, a mathematician can be a black female. The problem is that she's not mathematical. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't do any math in the, in the story. Um, we don't see her doing anything that is even vaguely mathematical. So instead, the story goes off on a wild love affair, you know, subplot. She gets lost in space. It, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. The one scene that I like uh, with, with Lula Bell, which I think is reasonable extrapolation from the book, is the whole plot device of a math contest and, and uh, uh, my messages to her inviting her to Trantor. That's not in the book, but it works because it makes sense. You know, somehow Gal would have, uh, have had to come to know Harry Selden. And how is that accomplished? So that worked, that makes sense. Of course, they, they destroy it by having uh, me comment how people don't believe the solution was achieved by a young girl, you know, which is ludicrous and it sort of undermines their whole premise. But uh, they had to put that in to be politically correct. It's ridiculous. So now we come to the beautiful and talented Lee Harvey as Salvor Hardin. And here we really have problems because in the book, Salvor Hardin is the mayor of Terminus. Salvor, that character, is a politician and, you know, probably an older male as per written, how, how the story was written. So yes, this character could have been played successfully by a black woman easily, but she would have needed to have gravitas. She would need to be a believable, believable as a mayor for starters. And she would need to be kind of like a Stacey Abrams character, someone who is cerebral, but also passionate, tactical. You know, that's the Salvor Hardin vibe. Someone who kicks ass through thought and intellectual acumen, you know, and cleverness. Salvor Hardin is clever. Um, and Salvor Hardin outmaneuvers political foes, not, doesn't fight with them. But what we get instead in the TV show is a lot of action sequences and those sequences, um, in order to save any of this, they, they would have had to be really good and they aren't. The whole bit about the uh, Anacreans uh, having their planet wrecked by the emperor, that's not in the book, but it's also rubbish. I mean, the sequences are poorly paced. Um, you know, it's not as bad as Star Trek Discovery, but. <laughs> You know, but it's hard for anything to be as bad as Star Trek Discovery. So anyway, what is poor Lee Harvey to do? She's cast in a role that makes it impossible to meaningfully say the most important line in all the Foundation books, which is, violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. That's a famous line, and it's a good line. And, you know, it would make no sense for her to say that line in this, in, this, in this story. So the entire representation of Terminus is wrong. We won't go into the details about that. I've winched enough, but sufficient to say this is really a serious Selden crisis. And what is the solution? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? And as Salvor Hardin from the book would say, it's obvious as all hell. You know, what needs to happen is instead of this trend of recycling old stories and ripping off old stories, you know, they need to make new stories. I think the writers of Foundation kind of understood that. There's a lot of good app ideas in this Apple TV show. There's a lot of good ideas. It's good science fiction, even kind of hard science fiction. And it's too bad they didn't just make a new show instead of trying to leverage the fame and rip off Isaac Asimov um, by using his story because... 
is is pretty awful. Now, does that mean I'm saying don't watch it? No, definitely watch it, enjoy it, but understand that it's not the foundation from the book, and so in that sense, it's 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 not the foundation.